่ขี้ปาดทางกลางหาวดาวประเด็นถ้าพิเรนลูซีบุตยามอนแดงเป็ดโทรจิตคำไายลูกตะไทยสดสยมาลามรามแพงแสนหักดวงอายาราเป็นวิชาแม่ไม้มวยตาBoxing is the fighting art. Boxing is fighting. Thai boxing is the fighting art, which uses fist, foot, knee, and elbow. Boxing is a martial art and sport. It's either boxing by rules or free of rules, fist to fist, one on one. Boxing is the art of using the body as a weapon to defend and to fight. It's believed that every nation knows boxing, especially the men. Therefore, boxing is an international sport. But there's no boxing of any country that can bring out the best use of the body for fighting, as well as the deadly weapon from Thailand called Muay Thai. Each country has its own brand of national sport. The Muay Thai is the main sport for Thais, and we are most proud of it. It is the ultimate art of fighting, and it has been a favorite Thai sport for over 400 years. Boxing is based in art. It creates artistic fighters. Therefore, Muay Thai is the art Thai men learn by heart, and we help support its propagation. For those who love Muay Thai.
We can't trace back to the origin of Muay Thai clearly, but it is assumed that it happened by instinct, necessitated by the adaptation of fighting by all creatures on Earth. When one faces a fight to protect one's own life, one turns parts of the body into weapons. The word Muay was not born from anyone's rule. It's believed that Muay was born automatically from the instinct to protect one's life when endangered by or faced with threat. The pressure to survive presses on and the reaction works. The art of Muay Thai is the fighting method which includes art and body weapons to fight and to protect like a deadly weapon. In fact, it can cripple or kill the opponent immediately from the power of body weapons like elbows, fists, knees and feet. Man knows instinctively that by tightly clenching the fingers he can form a fist. And the fist is the focal point of the power which comes from the synchronized movements of arm and shoulder, enhanced by the mental concentration which focuses the power in the fist and palm. This powerful combination creates the real killing power of the fist. A strong hand-fist movement creates power. A power ready for use as a weapon. This is how a fist is formed from the hand by clenching the fingers, creating a potent and powerful weapon. It can render an opponent unconscious either within or outside of sporting rules. The martial arts of the people of Southeast Asia have evolved over a long period of time and emphasize developing the full potential of the human body as a means of defense and attack rather than relying more on weapons as is the case in many other countries. The martial art for which the Thai people are renowned worldwide has itself been practiced and refined since ancient times when every warrior had to develop close combat skills to fight enemies on the battlefield. In this style of fighting, many parts of the body were used as effective weapons. Fists, elbows, knees, and feet all became powerful weapons when employed by these tenacious warriors of old. When Muay Thai fighters make use of the natural destructive power of the fists, they are inspired by a similar determination. When needing to protect himself as effectively as possible, man will naturally resort to using his fists. Later, he may also make use of other parts of the body, such as elbows, knees, feet, and even the head. Then, he will develop his own techniques. In that way, the use of the fist has developed. Man knows that by clenching his fingers, he can create a weapon powerful enough to defeat an opponent. So, when the need to fight arises, either with or without sporting rules, man will instinctively use his fists. By using fists and feet as weapons, as in Muay Thai, the fighter will improve their effectiveness. He will develop their use in fighting techniques for both attack and defense. And to win a fight, mastery of a good defensive technique is essential. Practice begins by all-round development of the strength and staying power of the fists, feet, knees and legs together with the coordination of eyes and body movements to ensure the full effectiveness of the fighting technique. Development of powerful and strong legs is important as most movements depend on them. They must be able to respond quickly and provide maximum spring and they must always be ready to be used against an opponent. Employing basic Muay Thai techniques to improve fighting skills is not so difficult. If used correctly, fists, feet, elbows and knees can all be used to defend and to attack. 
The essence of Muay Thai is its development of a fighting technique which uses the entire body, both as a means of defense and as a weapon with deadly potential. Effective use of Muay Thai can quickly cripple or even kill an opponent with the use of powerful weapons such as the elbows, fists, knees and feet. The deadly effectiveness of Muay Thai has earned it a worldwide reputation and today many people want to learn this unique art which uses the body as a weapon. Fighting without gloves but with the knuckles lightly bandaged, Katua was a unique feature of Muay Thai which used all parts of the body as effective weapons in a fighting technique which became and lives on as a truly noble art. Most Thai males are traditionally attracted to Muay Thai in the knowledge that parts of the body can be used as a means of self-defense. It is a tradition dating from the Ayutthaya period in the country's history and one which remains active today. The world of commercial boxing, as it operates in these times, owes a great debt to the ancestors of today's boxers for the proud heritage of this noble art they created to be passed from generation to generation. Muay Thai calls for many levels of study, research and practice. When mastery of the basics is achieved, the student can go on to develop his skills to the full extent of his potential. A higher level of skill is not difficult to attain because the main weapons employed, the feet, fists, knees and elbows, are used both for attack and defense. Muay Thai as we know it today evolved from the fighting style of Ka Chiyat, to which the rule known as Sprat Mue was applied. This early style was often exceptionally violent and matches frequently ended with the fighters bruised and bloody, especially if their levels of skill were not equal. Elbows were often used, the fists bound only with cloth, and the feet employed as a powerful weapon. Fights were tough and often brutal events. Practice, therefore, must start with the very basics. These are the use of fists, feet, knees, and elbows, referred to as Step 4, use of feet. Step 3, use of fists. Step 2, use of knees. Step 1, use of elbows. All of these steps must be followed correctly. If the opponent is at step 4, step 3 must be used. If the opponent is at step 2, step 1 must be used. If the steps are not followed, the defense cannot be effective. So the trainer and boxing student must practice and coordinate them well. If used at the correct step, the full potency of the fists and feet will be achieved. An accurate punch, for example, when properly delivered, can slow down an opponent. This is the art of fighting efficiently. It can be brutal, tough, and powerful. The use of other body weapons, such as the feet, must also be practiced so that it becomes almost a reflex action. Used properly, the feet can be the most effective of all the body weapons. To make the best of an opportunity when the opponent loses his balance by stumbling or by being hurt, the fighter must attack repeatedly at a time when his opponent's defenses are down. And at such a time, the use of the knees can be very effective. Again, a skilled opponent can use his elbow as an effective defense. Building up one's strength and fitness is the key to developing strong, hard fists. And the eyes must be fast. Observing and reacting to small moving objects helps to quicken the movement and response of the eyes. All this is part of the basic training to strengthen the body of a boxer who often needs to fight at close range. Another part of development of the body is the practice of using fists, feet, knees and elbows in defense and attack. This requires attaining proficiency in technique and timing. Correct defense and attacking technique is an art to be mastered. When not on the defense, the boxer must step forward and attack and in doing so he has the advantage of both power and technique. 
an effective attack can induce fear or submission in an opponent who may be hurt. If the attack is especially severe, the opponent may become unconscious or even die. The specific target of an attack requires careful timing and consideration as to which body weapon to use. Whenever an attack is carried out, it must produce results. The fighter must, therefore, learn all the nerve points on the body, which are the most important and which are the most vulnerable. For example, the fist strikes the chin and the foot connects with the opponent's neck as he lurches forward or the knee is aimed at the opponent's chest. In this context, the various points of importance on the body include behind the ears, the point of the chin, the jaw, the temple, neck, abdomen, the solar plexus, the sternum, shins, rib cage, pubic area, and outer thigh. The parts of the body used by the fighter to attack at close range are 1. The head used against weak points such as the chest, nose, face, and chin. Two, the fist, used against weak points such as the face, behind the ears, the neck, the solar plexus, the rib cage, and the chest. Three, the elbow, used against parts such as the chest, feet, chin, and neck. It can be as effective as the fist. Four, the knee, used to cause severe damage to parts such as the chest wall, abdomen, and rib cage. And five, the foot and entire length of the shin, used to kick at the chest or any part of the opponent's body within reach. Eyes are also very vulnerable to blows with the hard weapon such as a fist. If timed correctly, a blow to the eyes is very effective. As well as having a thorough knowledge of all body weapons, the boxer must know all points of the body which are either weak or vulnerable to attack, to be able either to protect them when on the defensive or to target them when attacking. The main points are 1. The area from the chin to behind the ears. An attack on this area can result in unconsciousness. 2. Abdomen, solar plexus, and sternum. These are the weakening points. 3. The rib cage and soft bones are also weak spots. 4. The testicles. A blow to this area cuts the breath and induces weakness. 5. Outer thigh. Blows on the muscles of the outer thighs can render them tender and painful. 6. Inner and outer shin around or near the knees. The tendons and muscles can easily be damaged and sprained. 7. The shins. The shin bones are easily broken. To be effective when the boxer attacks, each part of the body must be strong and able to resist the impact of striking the target. Every part of the body must be strong enough to enable the boxer to defend and attack, both forwards and backwards. The boxer must learn to protect himself against attack and not to suffer injury. This is the secret of defense. When an opportunity arises, the method of effectively slowing down or stopping an attacking opponent uses both defensive and counter-attacking moves, employing the fists, knees, feet, or elbows. The art of Muay Thai, therefore, lies both in defense and attack. In ancient times, learning to box meant having to practice all of the basics before moving on to the main techniques, which were considered part of the advanced practice because of their deadly accuracy and effectiveness and combination of attack and follow-up. Attack should aim for a deadly strike. A follow-up makes it more effective. To attack effectively, making use of the important vulnerable points on the body, the boxer must aim for a deadly strike. To learn and practice Muay Thai is not an easy task. It requires, first, a love of boxing. Second, having the mind of a boxer. Third, an understanding of the art of boxing. Fourth, patience, application, and dedication. Fifth, a thorough understanding of the basics. And sixth, an ability to graduate to developing the skills required for the main techniques. 
These require first learning the basic techniques, which cover use of the fists, elbows, knees, and feet, which must be learned correctly and applied in the proper sequence. Step four, feet. Step three, fists. Step two, knees. Step one, elbows. Each step must be practiced until it becomes almost second nature. If it is executed wrongly, the balance is broken and the counter move cannot be applied in time. Muay Thai, therefore, requires a strong body and a clear mind. It also requires concentration, focus, and constant practice to develop power and fast reflexes. Both the first and the follow-up strikes must also be practiced repeatedly. Practice methods often begin with shadow boxing, using a coconut palm or a post erected in a suitable area, such as a punching bag. A further method of practicing is marking a large triangle in the practice area in which are drawn three numbered circles, each three paces apart, to serve as bases from which to practice basic moves. Timing is most important and the following points must be borne in mind. First, timing three involves boxing by leading forward at the same time placing the foot in circle number three using the fist and foot of the same side. Two, timing one involves placing the right foot in circle number two. If the boxer is practicing by punching straight ahead with the right foot, number three leading, he then switches positions as follows. A. He counts one with the left foot in circle number one. B. He counts two with his right foot in circle number three, which is in front. C. He then counts three and throws a straight punch with his left. His left foot placed on the ground in circle number three. His front leg is slightly bent and his back leg fully extended, and his body is in a slightly crouched position. He boxes alternatively right and left, increasing speed and keeping the legs well spaced. The pacing and timing of all movements must be perfected before the boxer can progress to the other main and supplementary techniques. When boxing, the boxer must always remember the following. Be strong of mind. Do not be easily deterred. Don't become angry or careless, which will cause you to fall into your opponent's trap. Be considerate, but always maintain your guard. Never show signs of weakness, which may lead to defeat. Don't follow the gaze of your opponent too intently or for too long. Just watch your opponent to anticipate his next move. If you suffer injury, don't reveal your feelings and continue with your attack to win. When sparring with your opponent, try to judge his likely move. When confrontation occurs, a strong mind is needed. Maintain your focus on winning. When practicing basic foot movements, getting within your opponent's guard is an obvious objective. It's like gaining entrance to the enemy's stronghold to see what's inside. How you approach your opponent and the posture you adopt will determine how well you can undermine his confidence. Using the galloping horse stance can be very effective, as can the walking tiger stance. Each part of the body signals attack. Practice of these movements requires careful synchronization of timing. Each movement must be carried out firmly and deliberately like a tiger stalking its prey and ready to pounce. Here the firmness of the feet and the steady rhythm of the movements indicate a first-class boxer. Exponents of Muay Thai must practice both attacking and defensive foot movements to ensure that they maintain their balance and coordination. Foot movements. 
first. The feet must be spaced and elbows length apart, facing outwards with the weight on the left foot. Second, the feet move over one another, a palm's length apart. And third, the upper body leans forward at an angle of 45 degrees. These positions must be remembered by the boxer and practiced well, both in attack and defense. The relative distances must also be maintained. Method of practicing the main moves and the other supplementary moves of Muay Thai. When practicing the main moves and techniques of Muay Thai, close supervision is required to ensure correct timing and striking distance to the opponent's weak points so that contact is made the first time. The trainer must exercise patience and care. He must be composed, but he must insist on discipline. And he must also set an excellent example, using the skills he has acquired to pass on his knowledge to the student boxer. Practicing Muay Thai Tricks Before practicing the skills of Muay Thai, you must start from the correct guarding posture, from the standing posture. Here's how to stand when preparing to fight. First, the correct stance when having to defend is for the arms to be raised up in a closing manner. There are closing, sweeping, and opening postures. The arms raised stance is a basic posture to protect yourself from the attacking fists of the opponent. Muay Thai Action 1 is called the Zigzag or Salat Phan Pla. This action is the basic movement used when defending against and avoiding hard punches from the opponent. To practice, A, the attacker sends a straight left punch and steps his left foot forward. The target is the face of the defender. Move the right foot back one step and lean to the right at about a 60 degree angle. The weight is on the feet. Now, lift your left arm and sweep the opponent's fist from your face. Punch straight at your opponent's eyes or lift your right arm to sweep the opponent's fist away. And quickly, grab the opponent's upper right arm. The defender's left hand catches the opponent's left wrist, which is called the catch the arm trick. Or, raise your right hand to sweep the opponent's left punch. Then. Throw your left punch from below into the opponent's chin. If the opponent uses a right punch, you have to use your left hand to protect your face while sending a right punch from below. If the opponent uses a right punch, you defend in the opposite way. Paksa Wakran, or the bird bursts from the nest, is our next technique. This is most suitable for fighting at close range. This is important in leading to use your elbow and preparing for the next step. To practice, A, the attacker punches at the face of the defender with a straight left, together with stepping his left foot forward. B, the defender then hurriedly steps his left foot forward, a little bit to the left, toward the left hand of the attacker. The defender next leans over at an angle of about 60 degrees with his weight on his left foot. Then the defender folds his arms to receive the impact from the opponent's upper and lower arms. The fists of the defender are close together, similar to forming a Y greeting. The defender's elbow is away from the body, about the length of one hand, with his head and face hidden behind his fists. His eyes are watching for the left punch of the opponent, which the defender then returns hard with his elbow. If the opponent sends a right punch, the defender returns in the opposite way. Remember to be both defender and attacker when practicing. This skill is designed to avoid a straight punch from the opponent. 
attack from the outside with your elbow to practice. A. The attacker punches left to the face of the defender and steps forward. B. The defender steps to the right, leaning at about a 60 degree angle, with his weight on his right foot. He bends his right arm and strikes with his elbow at the attacker. Then the defender raises his left hand to sweep the opponent's left hand away and hit with the elbow elsewhere. Your practice should begin from right, then the left, in the game of defending and attacking to improve speed. You must practice each skill carefully. Yokao Patsumain. This skill is to cope with the opponent's straight punch by stepping forward and sending a hook to the chin of the opponent. To practice, A. The attacker sends a straight punch and balances on his left foot. B. The defender steps forward with his right foot and lowers his body. He then bends his right knee, left leg stretched. He is leaning over at about a 60 degree angle with his weight on his right foot. Then he springs his body up together with sending a right punch into his opponent's chin, always raising his left arm to the level of his chin to protect himself. You should practice as both defender and attacker as usual until you learn it by heart. Once you achieve four or five skills, you should start practicing from the first skill so you won't forget. This skill will allow you to protect against and return a straight punch from your opponent. It is the same as the fifth skill you learned, except the difference is the foot placing and leaning the body just a little only. To practice, A. The attacker punches left straight and steps forward to the left. B. The defender steps left foot forward in a circle of the opponent's arm and bending his left knee a little with his right knee straight. His body is leaned over at a 60 degree angle. Then he stretches up and punches left at the opponent's chin. Use the right arm to sweep the opponent's arm away and remember to practice both sides. Switch sides when practicing in order to become skillful in both attacking and defending. This skill is to defend against the straight right and left punch from the opponent by using the tip of the foot or heel to kick at the upper chest or lower stomach. It is used when fighting with an opponent who has long arms and is taller or with an opponent who uses weapons rather than bare hands. To practice, A. The attacker sends a straight left punch and steps forward to the left. B. The defender bends to the right about 45 degrees to duck away from the opponent with his weight on his right foot. Both arms are raised at face level with eyes fixed on the opponent. The defender quickly lifts his left heel to kick at the upper chest or lower stomach. 
when practicing, switch sides from attacking to defending, and vice versa. If fighters get in a clench, separate them and continue practice until mastering equivalent skills to other fighters of equal rank. Bear in mind that you practice Muay Thai to master it. Therefore, you need to be disciplined always so that you can learn the true art of Muay Thai. Don't forget that discipline makes the man and man creates work. Works of art require the expertise of those who really are truly dedicated. It is only then that it becomes a true masterpiece. Toy. This skill is to defend against a sweep kick from the opponent by using the elbow. This move must be synchronized with the kick. To practice, A, the attacker stands in front of the defender at the kicking rate. He then sweep kicks at the rib cage of the defender from right to left, his body bending a bit and his arms raised to protect his face. B, the defender then turns left and backs up his left foot, bending his right elbow to receive the kick of the opponent, and with his left arm raised at face level to protect his face. If an opposite move is made, if the attacker attacks from the left, defend from the opposite side. Again remember to switch sides when in practice. This skill must be done very quickly, without the opponent anticipating it. To practice, A. The attacker steps backwards to duck from the opponent's kick. B. The defender turns himself quickly by using the foot he kicked before as the main leg. Then he turns around and uses the other foot to kick at the chin or upper chest of the opponent. Notice. Turning and kicking must be done very quickly. Don't let the opponent notice or anticipate your move. Practice both defender and attacker. When practicing, remember to do it just gently. Try not to be hit. Just practice to master the skill. This skill is used to return the opponent's kick by cutting the strength of his leg. This is done by using the elbow to hit at the thigh. Sometimes both knees are used in order to give the opponent a sprained leg so he will not wish to go on fighting. To practice, A. The attacker lifts his right foot to sweep kick at the rib cage of the defender. His arms are at face level to protect it. B. The defender steps right foot to the attacker at almost a tight close range. The defender turns left, raises his right knee with his left foot stretched. Then he uses his left hand to catch the opponent's right leg at his side. Then he bends over and places his right elbow into the thigh of the attacker. When lifting the opponent's leg, a defender should lift it high so that the opponent cannot hit back with his elbow. Notice, if the attacker punches right straight, counterattack in the opposite way. If you want to cut the strength of the opponent, do hit with arms and elbows at the same time. When practicing, use the upper arm to press down instead of the elbow to prevent danger.
นาคาปิถัง This skill is intended to receive the opponent's kick by catching his foot, twisting it aside from the defender's body, and throwing your knees at the shin of the opponent in order to break it. To practice, a the attacker uses his right leg to sweep kick at the rib cage of his opponent, arms raised to protect his face. B. The defender then turns left, weight on his left foot, as his left hand catches the heel of the opponent. His right hand catches the tip of the opponent's foot and twists it away from the body. Then he raises his right knee to kick at the inner thigh of the opponent. Notice, when practicing this skill, be careful when catching your opponent's foot by using both hands. If he attacks with his left foot, do the opposite. When practicing, hit the knee softly at the thigh, or else the bone might break. Dabchawala. This skill is to receive a straight punch by returning with a punch to the face or to the eye sockets to make the opponent's eyes become blurred. Sometimes this is called putting his lights out. To practice, a the attacker punches directly at the face of the defender and steps forward with the left foot. His right hand is at his chin. B. The defender steps to the right. Ducks outside the punch of the opponent, bends to the right with his weight on his right foot and his right knee slightly bent. His left foot is stretched. He then bends his right arm to sweep and presses the opponent's left arm so that it falls to the left. The defender presses the attacker's arm down, then punches his opponent with his left fist between the mouth and the nose or at the eye socket. He then jumps back. Notice if the attacker launches a right punch, we turn with the opposite. You and talk, huh? This skill is used to return a kick from your opponent by sweep kicking at the back of his legs. If kicked with enough force, the opponent will immediately surrender to avoid severe damage to his leg. To practice, a the attacker prepares his attack by kicking gently at the defender's stomach. B the defender uses his left hand to sweep the kick away and catch the opponent's ankle. Then, with his right leg, he sweep kicks at the back legs of the opponent using force. Notice: if you get kicked with your opponent's right foot, defend in the opposite way, and remember to practice without employing excessive force. This skill is for protecting from and returning a kick to the chin, which is employed in skill number two, called Batalupak. By ducking the chin, 
and kicking at the leg from behind to make the opponent unsteady. To practice, A, the attacker jumps to kick the chin of the defender by kicking straight with the right foot. B, the defender then jumps to duck from the kick, leaning over to the left with his weight on the left foot. He then puts the right foot in to kick the back of the leg of the opponent. Kick at the knee. If hard enough, the opponent won't have a chance to fight any longer, or he will be able to move only with great difficulty. Notice, if the opponent kicks with the left foot, the defender prepares to defend in the opposite way. While practicing, try to withdraw quickly after kicking the back of the leg of the opponent in order to deliver a soft blow which will not cause him harm. This skill is important when hitting the opponent's face with an elbow, quickly, without the opponent anticipating your move. It is most suitable for fighting with a bigger, stronger opponent. To practice, A. The attacker, if punched with a straight left, steps left. B. The defender moves his left foot to be close to the opponent. He uses a right punch to sweep the opponent's left arm and raises his elbow to the level of the earlobe, hitting suddenly at the face of the opponent. If the opponent backs up to prepare for punching with his right fist, the defender should follow suit and hit with the right elbow at the face, switching from left to right. The opposite arm protects the ribcage from the opponent's attack. While practicing, be careful not to let the elbow hit your opponent's face too hard. This skill is used to receive the opponent's punch by crossing the punch into the opponent's chin, turning his head close to the opponent. To practice, A, the attacker sends out a left straight punch at the face of the defender and steps forwards, guards up. B, the defender leans aside from the fist, then moves close with his left leg, turning his left side to the opponent's chest. Then he clenches his fists and throws them at the chin of the opponent. Notice, if the attacker attacks with a right punch, return in the opposite direction. When practicing, use the palm to keep away your opponent's chin instead of punching. This skill is to return the opponent's straight punch in a manner similar to the number 12 skill called Hong Pekat. The difference is that instead of hitting with the elbow at the upper arm, hit at the chest or neck. This makes the opponent stop the fight if hit hard enough. To practice, A, the attacker punches with the left straight at the defender's face. His left foot steps forward. His fists are at chin level. B. The defender leads with his left foot, moving close to the opponent quickly, bending in the left arm of the opponent. The defender's fist sweeps the opponent's left arm away from him. Then he raises the left elbow to hit at the chest repeatedly. Notice, if the opponent starts attacking with right punches, return with the opposite and hit the elbow softly. This skill is used to sweep kick the back of the leg of the opponent to make him lose balance, then punch or strike at him with an elbow. To practice, A, the attacker stands with left guard up and steps his left foot forward, turning
turning his side to the defender as he prepares to box. B. The defender prepares to trick him with a false punch, but when the opponent starts to move to kick or punch, the defender sweep kicks with his right foot at the back of his opponent's left leg, and he does so severely, so that the opponent loses balance and falls down. He then moves quickly to punch or hit with the elbow. Notice, if the opponent attacks with his right foot first, we turn with the opposite. And when practicing, remember to play safe. This particular skill can cause an opponent to be unable to walk. To practice, revise all of the tricks to make yourself more powerful and to master more of the art of Muay Thai. Once you have mastered it, Muay Thai gives you great skill to use the weapons of yourself. Your mind works more clearly, and as your experience accumulates, it then helps you to return a fight with skill automatically. Patience is the main key to success, and a healthy body also counts, providing a strong base. Muay Thai also helps you to improve your character. If you want to be a fighter, you have to practice constantly, studying its theory as well to give light to the thought. Being a fighter is not to be a killer. Being a hunter is not to be a murderer. Being a teacher is not to make something wrong. Learning just a little can be less useful. Learning with practice gives you experience. Muay Thai, the traditional martial art of ancient Thai warriors. It's rich history providing the modern world with one of the most effective fighting arts ever to be employed on earth. Thailand has never been colonized, and there is no doubt that this tradition of Thai autonomy owes its origins to Muay Thai, the art of winning in combat. I beat my feet with hands and feet And so I'm poor, I'm brave and bold I hold on to the end Thai kickboxing is my way Wounds and cuts prove I've got guts Bones, legs underneath my skin And if it's thin, I feel the tiger's might So stamping on the gloves, high boxers never fear to fight They teach us how to fight in Mexican games. More stands firm, where crocodiles firm stars scattered in the sky. From the sky, the giant flies. Class sweeping monks and elephant benches drunk. Knocking down the hill, the hermit down the hill. In the field with the plow, soaking face with feet. Elbow and head is beyond belief. The mouse that he knife, the sister giant wife. Brahma teaches us. The son of father, fighting in the ring, the very pretty All of these moves are like Thai boxing thing Welcome to Amazing Thailand This is Muay Thai Sushyan Yes! Up on the hill!
move Have a little bit in him The teacher how to fight In matches and in games More than firm Why crocodiles worm Stars scattered in the sky But he scattered giant flies Glass weeping monk And elegant when she's drunk Nothing down the hill The hermit by the pill In the field with the plow Talking face with fist Elbow and head It's beyond belief The mouse that he knows The sister giant's wife The son of our dad, driving in the wind, the very pretty All this moves to the time of dancing This is a very important skill used to return at the opponent who is good at punching, kicking, and knee kicking. There are three ways to practice. In the first step, A, the attacker sends a left punch to the face of the defender and steps to the left side. B, the defender steps to the left towards the opponent. His right arm sweeps the opponent's left arm away from the body. In the second step, A, the attacker lifts his right leg to sweep kick at the rib cage of the defender. B, the defender then turns and backs up, moving his left foot to the left. He lowers his body and hits with the elbow at the upper leg of the opponent. In the third step, A, the attacker bends his right arm and lowers his body, elbow punching at the neck or head of the defender. B. The defender stretches up, uses the upper arm to receive hits from the opponent's upper arm. He then turns and backs up, with his right foot a little to the right. Notice, if the attacker punches straight right, the defender defends in the opposite way. Switch sides when practicing until becoming proficient. The practice of other skills goes in a similar way, as follows. One, Erawan Suenga. This skill is like the sixth skill, called Tain Kamfak. It is to receive and then punch the chin from below. The difference is, when punching, you have to twist the fist 
and attack with your shoulder at the opponent's chest. To practice, A. The attacker punches left at the face of the defender and steps forward, right fist at the chin. B. The defender turns himself a bit to the left to duck the left punch from the opponent. Then he turns himself to the right and sends a left punch at the chin from below. The defender tries to keep his shoulders close to the opponent. Notice, if the opponent sends a straight right punch, the defender defends the opposite way and tries to push away the opponent's chin instead of actually hitting it. This skill requires agility and speed in order to deliver before the opponent notices and prepares to defend. While guarding, kick at the opponent's chin or use the foot to graze the opponent's face. To practice, A. The attacker guards and jabs left, then steps forward, right fist at the chin, ready to hit the face of the defender with a straight left. B. The defender then puts his guard up and jabs with his left. When the attacker moves in order to attack with a left punch, the defender then uses his left fist to sweep away the opponent's left punch to the right. He then immediately kicks with his right foot into the chin, or use the foot to graze the face of the opponent instead of kicking. Lean to the left, place weight on the left foot, and guard at chest level. Notice, if the attacker guards up to the right, the defender then returns in the opposite way. Again, switch sides when practicing. This skill requires the time necessary to get close to the opponent. You have to use arm and waist power to catch and throw the opponent to the floor on his back. This skill needs special quickness so as not to let the opponent have time to prepare. To practice, A. The attacker sends a straight left punch and steps forward his right fist at the chin. B. The defender steps out with his left foot. He lifts his right arm at the elbow, sweeps away the opponent's arm from the body, and uses the speed to get close to the opponent and wrap his left arm around the attacker's body. He then uses his hip to lift up the opponent and throw him onto the floor with force. The attacker will lose strength, and his head might hit the floor so hard that he must surrender. Notice, if the attacker attacks with the right, return in the opposite way, but do not throw him too hard. Now song. This skill is used to return twin elbow hits from the opponent by lifting the lower arm to receive it, then punching at the chin of the opponent with another fist. To practice, 
the attacker steps toward the defender or gets close enough to him to hit with both elbows at the head. The defender then steps toward the opponent and lifts his lower arm parallel with the floor to receive a fist or elbow from the opponent. Suddenly, use the other fist to punch the chin of the opponent from below, stepping in with the punch. Notice, switch sides when practicing and employ caution. This skill is important for returning left and right kicks quickly and with force, causing your opponent to surrender. To practice, A, the attacker kicks the defender with his right foot and swing kicks at the rib cage. His body is leaning, his weight is on his left foot, and his fists are at chest level. B, the defender bends over to the right and lifts his left foot to kick at the left thigh of the opponent while he balances himself. Notice, if kicked hard, the resulting pain will probably cause your opponent to resign from the fight. Also, remember that if the opponent attacks with his left foot, return with the opposite and also switch sides when practicing. This skill is against the opponent who is adept at escaping from the back kick. This move must be done carefully so that the opponent doesn't anticipate it. There are two methods to practice. Method 1. A. The attacker guards with his right or left fist in front, ready to punch the face of the defender and move forward. B. The defender prepares and sweep kicks at the rib cage. His hands guard carefully. Method 2. A. The attacker backs up to duck from the defender's kick. The defender turns quickly and stands on the foot with which he just kicked. He turns around and uses the other foot to kick the chin or chest of the attacker. Notice, turning the body and kicking must be done accordingly and quickly. Don't let the opponent detect the move. When practicing, just kick softly. Hiran Moon Pandin. This is another important skill of Muay Thai. It is used for returning the kick of the opponent by turning towards him and hitting the chin or face of the opponent with the elbow. To practice, A. The attacker sweep kicks with the right foot at the rib cage of the defender. He leans on his left foot with his guards firm. B. The defender raises his lower arms to receive the kick, then turns quickly raises the left elbow at chin level and hits. Notice this must be done in two processes. Process one is to raise the arm to counter attack the kick. Process two is to turn around and hit the chin or face of the opponent with the elbow. If kicked with the left foot, return the fight in the opposite direction. As always, employ caution and pull your punches when practicing.
Nahut Padan. This skill is for returning the opponent's high kick aimed at the neck or head. It is done by ducking from the kick and kicking the opponent's legs until he stumbles. It is divided into two processes. For process one, step A is that the attacker kicks the defender with his right foot, aiming at the chin or temple while standing on the left leg. In step B, the defender bends over under the kicking right leg of the opponent. Process two is as follows. A, the attacker misses the target, spinning around because of balance loss. B, the defender then puts his right foot in and kicks the left leg of the attacker. When practicing, do it gently, because this skill can cause harm if not employed properly.